Today I'll be talking about how to calculate the volumes of solids of revolution using the washer method. The washer method is really just an extension of the disk method with two applications. In order to understand the washer method, you have to understand two concepts first. First is the application of the disk method and also the ability to determine the area between curves. The washer method is really just the volume of the outer solid subtracting the hollowed solid center. Given the function f of x is greater or equal to another function g of x from a to b with both being continuous, set the big radius or big R as f of x and set the small radius or R as g of x. The area between these two curves f of x and g of x really just represents the area of a cross section of a washer. The area between these curves or the washer is going to to be the definite integral of f of x or big R minus g of x or little r with respect to x from a to b. Also if we had two curves f of y and g of y with both of them being in terms of y obviously and f of y was greater than g of y the area between the two curves would be the definite integral of f of y or the right curve minus g of y the left curve with respect to y from c to d. We can then conclude based on the information we found about the area of a cross section of washer with our radius being the difference between two curves and what we know about the disk method we can conclude that the volume of revolution of a solid using the washer method revolving around the x-axis is really just the definite integral of pi times the quantity f of x minus g of x whole quantity squared with respect to x or our x-axis in this case from a to b. Note that the bound is in terms of x, so from a to b it's x equals a to x equals b. Similarly, a washer revolving around the y-axis equals the definite integral of pi quantity of f of y minus g of y whole quantity squared with respect to y from c to d. Note that the bound c to d is actually y equals c to y equals d. This is a, an example of the washer method revolving around the x-axis. So we're given the functions g of x equals x squared plus 2 and f of x which equals x plus 4. You might notice that unlike many of the other examples that typically provide the bounds, in this example we will be finding the bounds of a and b. So the way to find it is actually to find the points of intersection between g of x and f of x. So first set the equations equal to each other, bring everything to one side, and set it equal to zero. And after factoring out, we find that x is going to equal two, and also x would equal negative one. And we have to plug back both into either of the original equations, and we'll result in the points negative one, three, and also two, 6 and we just have to make sure these points are not boundaries of a region so the washer method can be used. So with the bounds that we are able to find negative 1 because this is revolving around the x-axis and 2. Visually this is what our washer looks like with the new bounds. Remember that because we're revolving around the x-axis, our bounds will be in terms of x, so x equals negative 1 to 2, and also when you're actually doing a problem, you won't have a 3D version of what your washer looks like, so do draw a 2D version of your area of the, your, your cross section in order to find which curve is the top curve and which curve is the bottom curve. So given, after drawing the picture, you can see that uh, the big R or the top curve will be x plus 4 and the smaller curve will be x squared plus 2. And for the purpose of our example, they have been already set with f of x will be the greater function than g. Plug f of x and g of x into our 
washer method equation, which is V equals the definite integral of pi times the quantity of f of x squared minus g of x squared with respect to x from a to b. So our new a to b will be from negative 1 to 2. And after plugging in f of x and g of x and doing some of the math and simplifying, we find that the volume will equal 162 pi divided by 5. I hope my video was helpful in your understanding of how to calculate the washer method and what it looks like. Thanks for watching. This is a, an example of the washer method revolving around the x-axis. So we're given the functions g of x equals x squared plus 2 and f of x, which equals x plus 4. You might notice that unlike many of the other examples that typically provide the bounds, in this example, we will be finding the bounds of a and b. So the way to find it is actually to find the points of intersection between g of x and f of x. So first set the equations equal to each other, bring everything to one side and set it equal to zero. And after factoring out, we find that x is going to equal two and also x would equal negative one. And we have to plug back both um, into either of the original equations and we'll result in the points negative one, three, and also two, six. And we just have to make sure these points are not boundaries of a region so the washer method can be used. So with the bounds that we are able to find, negative one, because this is revolving around the x-axis, and two, we should plug f of x and g of x into our washer method equation, which is v equals the definite integral of pi times the quantity of f of x squared minus g of x squared with respect to x from a to b. So our new a to b will be from negative 1 to 2. And after plugging in f of x and g of x and doing some of the math, and simplifying, we find that the volume will equal 162 pi divided by 5. 